Good afternoon, Hippo Nation. Welcome to the Hutto ISD Bond 2023 Information Session. I am your proud superintendent for Hutto ISD, Dr. Selena Estrada Thomas, and with me today is Mr. Henry Gideon, Assistant Superintendent for Operations. Bond 2023 is a $522 million plan to add capacity to the growing schools in Hutto. Let's start out with some bond basics. One of the most commonly asked questions that we get is, what is a school bond? And a school bond is very similar to a home mortgage. And many people in our community can relate to a home mortgage and the obligations that go with owning a home. So in, in school systems, in public schools, bond monies can be used for new schools and facilities, expansion and renovation of existing facilities, new school sites and other land parcels, and for acquiring buses and upgrading technology in the school district. Bond money, though, cannot be used to fund daily operating costs such as salaries, utilities, fuel, field trips, anything that we supply in schools, we could not use bond money for. As a matter of fact, there's some very strict accounting guidelines uh, for using bond money, and Hutto ISD takes a great deal of pride in the financial accounting of our current bond dollars and how we use those monies and how we take care of the monies and how we hold ourselves accountable, not, not only to ourselves, but also to our community. Back in 2019, the Hutto ISD community approved the 2019 bond. The drivers for 2019 were growth, equity, and safety. Five of the seven voter approved projects are complete, and the last two of those 2019 projects are underway. Let's take a brief look at what the 2019 bond projects approved by the Hutto ISD voters provided uh, for the Hutto ISD community. All of the elementary schools, the legacy, what we call the legacy elementary schools, Cottonwood Creek, Nadine Johnson, Ray, and Veterans Hill received upgrades to their library spaces and common spaces. Uh, if you walk into any of those elementary schools, you are greeted by these attractive learning spaces right at the very entrance of school. And also all of those elementary schools also have common maker spaces and robotic spaces uh, for the students. Hutto Elementary School, which is the oldest elementary school in the school district, received a complete makeover. And we also increased capacity there at Hutto Elementary School. It is located in one of the fastest growing areas of the city. Both middle schools, Farley and Hutto Middle School, also received uh, dramatic improvements to their library spaces and fine art spaces and career technology education spaces. Both middle schools have brand new band halls, they have new and improved orchestra halls, they have dedicated dance spaces and dedicated spaces to our award-winning robotics programs. Uh, transportation and technology, uh, the school district has a brand new transportation facility again to accommodate the growth. We were also able to include quite a bit uh, for technology upgrade. What people may not uh, remember now that COVID-19 seems to be past us, even though we're still uh, dealing with the after the effects of that uh, pandemic, was that during the closures for COVID-19, uh, we were able to use 2019 bond dollars to provide all of our students with one-to-one -one learning devices. We were one of the few school districts in Central Texas that were able to provide the devices along with hotspots to our kids so that they could continue learning even while the schools were closed. One of the other 2019 bond projects was, of course, middle school number three, which is Gus Almquist Middle School. It is currently under construction, and that third middle school will open in August of 2024. Uh, the other uh, project that is still underway, of course, are all of the improvements to Hutto High School. That project was so uh, massive, it had to be broken down into four phases. Uh, the 2019 bond dollars uh, were able to cover phases one and two. Phases three and four of that high school renovation project are included in bond 2023. And lastly, um, to the 2019 bond project also funded the upgrades to Hutto Memorial Stadium. Uh, that stadium went from a 4A seating capacity to a 6A seating capacity. 
That wraps up what uh, the 2019 bond was able to provide. For more information, you can go to our website, www.hipponation.org slash bond, and you can get a whole lot more uh, details about the 2019 bond. So fast forward to this past fall, um, the continued growth in our area warranted the creation of a 50 member citizen long range facilities planning committee it came together this fall, met for four months. Members included parents, grandparents, business leaders, students, civic leaders, educators, and Huddo ISD alumni. We were especially proud of the six, uh, seven students that participated on this long range facility planning committee. They did an outstanding job. Uh, committee members reviewed and analyzed Huddo ISD's demographics, growth and enrollment patterns, district finances, educational programs, and both intermediate and long-term needs for the district. By December, uh, the committee had wrapped up most of its work. Uh, the committee formed a recommendation for a bond proposal that was presented to the Board of Trustees on December the 8th. And then on January the 26th, January 26, 2023, the Huddo ISD trustees unanimously called for a $522 million bond referendum with three separate propositions to be placed on the ballot. And in full transparency, I do want to make note of the fact that the Citizens Committee recommended a bond package of $482 million. The Huddo ISD administration asked the Board of Trustees to consider three additional propositions that we felt were important uh, to keep up with the growth in the district. Uh, and after looking at those three proposals, the trustees agreed to approve one of those propositions, and that's Proposition C, and we'll go into more detail of what that proposition entailed. So once again, the total bond package that the board approved on Jan in January uh, was $522 million. Looking at Huddo ISD 2023 and beyond, as I explained, the 2019 bond drivers were growth, equity, and safety. Uh, equity and safety continue to be part of our work, but the main driver for Bond 2023 is definitely growth. Huddo ISD is the fourth fastest growing school district in Central Texas. And in the Central Texas area, there are approximately 65 school districts. Huddo ISD is ranked in the top 10, and of those top 10, we are number four. Three districts ahead of us in growth include Leander, Liberty Hill, Hayes Consolidated, and then Huddo ISD in fourth place. The Huddo ISD 10-year enrollment forecast includes the doubling of the current student population. So the current student population in Huddo ISD for this school year, 22-23, is approximately 9,800 students. By 2033, the student population in Hutto is expected to double. The latest demographic uh, projection numbers have us at 18,240 students by the year 2033. And that number is indicative of the latest demographic report. Uh, we work closely with Templeton Demographics. They provide the school district with quarterly reports um, and give us an indication of where the growth is happening in the district. And of course, we use that data to plan accordingly. All right, I'm going to take a pause here and turn it over to my partner, Mr. Gideon, and uh, he will pick it up and talk to us a little bit more about the continued growth in our school district. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. <clears throat> you know, part of our jobs in maintaining master facilities plans and long range planning discussions and keeping the conversations going with our stakeholders, uh, with our board, and with all the different jurisdictions that we work with is, is being able to look down the road and around the corner. So while we're looking at a bond that is proposed to cover us for the near term, there are long term uh, challenges that our, com our community is going to continue to face. And I've shared with stakeholders that I had attended a, a Dallas Fed meeting uh, at, a, at a conference that I went to some months ago and the economist uh, that was doing the presentation uh, spoke fairly highly of the Texas economy. It's very diversified. He, he describes it as somewhat recession proof. We realize that, that um, 
there will be ups and downs in our economy. So the, the growth that we project is based on very conservative analysis. However, uh, at the end of the meeting, the gentleman came up and spoke with me and, and asked if I was from Hutto, and I, I did uh, affirm that. And he said, well, that's East Williamson County. And Texas in particular is paying very, very close attention to East Williamson County. There are some economists that project East Williamson County, the Texas 130 corridor, the Texas 95 corridor, the 79 corridor as being central to some of the most significant economic uh, impact that will occur in the next 20 years. Uh, this slide shows our district, which is roughly 78 square miles. Uh, we're kind of divided into two major corridors, north-south, Texas 130, east-west, east -west, pardon me, US 79. Uh, of course, uh, FM 1660, Limmer Loop, and Chandler to the north are major roadways that go east-west, as is Carl Stern. But in 2022, Hutto ISD, in spite of the fact that we had sort of a slowing down or a cooling of the home market, still had a record number of home sales. There are 23 active subdivisions, uh, 11 future subdivisions, and 1,900 residential lots on the way. What we're seeing that is an economic impact to our area, and Dr. Thomas will, will, will discuss a slide later on with respect to Samsung, are industries and businesses that are looking to locate because of our proximity to major thoroughfares, the major rail that runs through Hutto. And as we look further down the road beyond this particular bond election, it's important for us to analyze with our demographer where we think growth is going to be. It is plausible that we see a scenario in which in the next 20 years, Hutto ISD could become a four high school school system that is serviced by seven middle schools and as many as 22 elementary campuses. With respect to this current bond proposal, we want to take a look at the areas in which we hope to have the most uh, impact on growth. All of our campuses are in need of some kind of uh, addressing of our capacities. So in May, the voters will have an opportunity to view or approve or consider uh, three propositions. First is Proposition A, it's $471 million. And in that proposition, we are looking at two elementary schools. Elementary eight will be co-located with the uh, second high school on the FM 1660 site uh, to the north. That is to address growth that we predicted would be occurring in the northeast quadrant of our district over the last five years. Uh, this elementary school will help bring um, capacity uh, uh, management to the elementary schools to the north, Hutto Elementary specifically, Cottonwood Creek, as well as Curley. Elementary 9, which would need to open a couple of years after elementary 8, is to address growth that's going to shift now to the southeast, largely due to the fact that there's a lot of interest in the Samsung development in Taylor, but also because of the Southwest Parkway that is going in. Land is being purchased and Speculators are working with uh, jurisdictions that have authority on future development in those areas, and we are projecting Ray Elementary School uh, to reach capacity concerns in the near future. We also want to go back and tackle some middle school additions to Farley and Hutto Middle School. Uh, that is to bring those two campuses up to a capacity of 1,200 so that it matches the new Gus Almquist Middle School. Uh, and that should take care of our middle school population in the intervening years. Additionally, as Dr. Thomas mentioned earlier, we want to tackle phase three and phase four of Hutto's high school renovation. We want to take care of the flagship of our community by going back in and specifically addressing somewhat growth, but also equity and safety uh, in the areas of uh, facility space that was designed for 3A, 4A that needs to be brought up to 6A. These include fine arts, robotics, audiovisual and tech classrooms, the Air Force ROTC, health sciences, auto mechanics, agricultural, agricultural mech, welding, and new competition gyms, as well as uh, dressing facilities for our student athletes and our, our children that are involved in the uh, physical ed programs. Then we have the build out of the ninth grade center when Hutto High School will finally add its second high school, likely in the next four to five years. We have district-wide technology upgrade. This is for primarily the infrastructure of our system uh, to expand our WAN, our data 
warehousing and our ability to uh, not only address security systems in our schools, cameras, card access, but also uh, to address the Wi-Fi needs of our district as we grow. We have a proposition to uh, give the board the ability to purchase land for future sites. We do own all the sites that we need for this particular bond, but going forward in 10 years and 15 years, more land will be needed for future school sites. We have district-wide facility upgrades. This is to go in and replace, just like you would as a, a homeowner, uh, certain mechanical systems that uh, have a life cycle. Uh, we hope to go in and address uh, significant HVAC, plumbing, electrical systems, uh, get a little bit more return on the investment with newer, uh, more high energy efficiency units. And then we have buses and satellite operations. Uh, what we hope to do here is to actually develop a satellite system south of the railroad tracks to serve our southern half. Uh, that is to one, reduce the number of times that we cross the railroad tracks, specifically at Chris Kelly and Carl Stern. We cross those tracks to, uh, at, at a daily rate of about 424 times. But if we can also operate out of the south, we will serve all of the southern schools and we can cut down on, on rider times and what we call deadhead miles. Proposition B is specifically for the devices, the one-to-one. -one. The law requires this be its own proposition. This is not only to uh, add for growth, but also replacement and refresh programs for our technology. Proposition C is $40 million to uh, address our district-wide academic center. This brings renovation to Hutto ISD's College Street facility, the original uh, space, if you will, for what had been Hutto ISD through the years. Uh, it includes uh, renovations to permanent space, but it also allows us to put in some additions. Uh, you'll notice from this particular uh, map, the building in red is the original old main building. It is, from an engineering perspective, not a building that can be rehabilitated. Uh, the foundation has suffered some damage and will need to be uh, demoed. In its place will likely be a, a, an addition. Um, most importantly, however, we want to bring in some of our most at-risk populations of students back into hardened facilities. The DAEP program, our River Horse Academy, and our Special Education 18 Plus program. The goal here is to serve three vital customers. Obviously, the business community and its engagement with the board, uh, our taxpayers, uh, back of the house, if you will, uh, our curriculum and instruction folks being able to provide professional learning uh, and, and training space for professional uh, development. And then, of course, all the various functions that a centralized uh, administration provides from human resources to the business office to food services, technology, all the support departments, and then fundamentally students. Uh, again, the, the RHA program, the 18 plus program, and our DAEP. So there you have it, $522 million. Dr. Thomas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gideon. Uh, the next part of our information session will include all of the details on how Hutto ISD uh, plans to pay for this bond. So one of the challenges that we have in informing our citizens about this bond is the ballot language that citizens will encounter when they actually go to the ballot box. So as required by House Bill 3, all three propositions on the Hutto ISD school bond ballot will state this is a property tax increase. What we're here to tell you is that despite the statutorily required ballot language, the district does not anticipate an increase to the tax rate. And so over the next uh, few minutes, I'm gonna be talking about the tax rate the tax base, and then just plain taxes. Because again, one of the most commonly asked questions is how is it that you're asking for $522 million in bonds and you, you are telling the voters that there is a zero tax rate increase? And yes, that is what our board of trustees and the district administration is proposing that if approved by voters, these bond proposals will result in a zero tax rate increase. And again, one of the most commonly asked questions they say is, how is that possible? Why do my taxes keep going up? Well, our taxes keep going up because the appraisals 
here in central Texas are going up. We live in a high demand area where people want to live and work and play, and that drives up the cost and the demands for housing in our area. So let's talk about what taxpayers see on their property tax bill. So property taxpayers see one tax bill, but that tax bill is based on a tax rate that is actually made up of two separate taxes. The first tax is the MO, which is maintenance and operation. And this is the tax that funds salaries, instruction, utilities, supplies, food, fuel, field trips, equipment, everything, uh, band instruments, everything that you see our students using in classrooms or on the athletic fields or in the fine, art, uh, fine arts performing areas, all of that is funded by maintenance and operation, the MO. And that tax rate is at 94 cents. As a matter of fact, this is the tax rate that the current legislature is uh, debating as I speak. As we provide this information on the bond, uh, this is what the legislature is uh, debating. And I know that they're uh, looking at how we can how can we continue to fund our public schools and yet provide ta uh, property tax relief to our homeowners and business owners. So once again, the M and O tax rate is set at 94 cents. The other tax is called the interest and sinking, which is the INS tax rate. Now this is the tax rate, and the money from this tax rate is what is used to pay bonds and bond elections affect the INS tax rate. That tax rate is currently 45 cents for a total of $1.39. So that's what property homeowners, business owners see on their property tax bill is the tax rate, which in Hutto ISD is at $1.39. Once again, that's 94 cents for m and 45 cents for interest and sinking. How do we plan to fund the 2023 bond? Well, the, again, the current INS tax rate is 45 cents. One penny of tax in Hutto ISD generates $826,691. And this tax rate, the 45 cents, is applied to the entire tax base in Hutto ISD. That includes all rooftops, all businesses, everything that sits in Hutto ISD is part of this tax. And um, just to give you perspective of the economic boom and the economic development here in our immediate area, five years ago when I became superintendent in 2017, that same penny of tax generated about $350,000 in revenue. And here we are five and a half years later, that same penny, that same tax rate now generates $826,691. We are confident that based on the economic development, the economic activity in our town and in our attendance area, the increasing tax base, once again, the base is everything within our boundaries, will generate enough revenue to meet bond payment obligations. So going back to the tax rate, the Hado ISD total tax rate has decreased in seven of the last eight years by a total of 27.71 cents. Uh, there was no change in the tax rate back in 2016. So in 2018, the bond, the tax rate was at $1.60. And again, this current, this past school year, the tax rate for Hutto was at $1.39. Again, coming down by 27.7 cents uh, in the last of the uh, seven of the eight years. Hutto ISD has been a responsible steward of taxpayer dollars through paying off debt early and by issuing bonds only as projects arise. So again, one of the most commonly asked questions about this bond is, Hutto ISD, are you going to sell all $522 million of bonds at once? And of course, the answer is no. Uh, we will take a look at all of the projects that are in this bond and only sell the bonds when a project is necessary. And a project, for example, would be um, building an elementary school. The growth in the district's tax base, 
within the district will allow Hutto ISD to build the projects in the bond proposals with the existing property tax rate, which is 45 cents, which is the only portion of your local taxes the Hutto ISD controls. So um, when we look back at the M&O tax rate and the interest in sinking tax rate, the M&O tax rate is pretty much set by the Texas Education Agency. Uh, the Board of Trustees uh, controls what happens to the interest and sinking rate. So in Hutto ISD, the property values have steadily increased uh, over the last six years. And just to give you perspective, in 2017-18, uh, the total taxable value in Hutto ISD was $2.6 billion. Fast forward to this past school year, 2022-2023, the total tax base in Hutto ISD was $7.3 billion. Uh, the tax base increased by over 40% in one year. Uh, we have already received preliminary uh, values for 23-24, uh, which have us increasing the total tax value by almost a billion dollars. Uh, those appraisals will not be final until July. Uh, there might be some minor adjustments, uh, but we know that this increasing tax base uh, will allow the school district to maintain its current tax rate and still meet its current and future bond obligations. The growth in the district's uh, tax base, again, is being fueled by all of the development uh, brought in of throughout the entire city. Uh, but right now we have a great deal of growth uh, to the east of our attendance area over by the Hutto mega site, which is located uh, on Highway 79 going east all the way to Farm Road 3349. Uh, the Samsung campus is being built just east of 3349 in the Taylor ISD zone. But that Samsung campus is really attracting uh, further development, uh, economic development in our area. Uh, just as one example, it's a, a bringing in uh, many secondary and tertiary companies that su support companies like Samsung. Uh, one of those uh, technology companies is going to be located there on Highway 79. And in the first phase of growth, uh, that company is projected to be worth over $2 billion. And as I stated earlier, uh, right now the tax burden in Hutto ISD is borne by our property owners and um, by a rate of 72% to 38% in businesses. This one business alone began to tip the scales on that tax burden uh, by adding $2 billion in the tax base value in Hutto ISD that tax burden could shift to homeowners carrying 55% of the load and our business sector carrying 45% of the load. And with that growing economic development, uh, that scale can continue uh, to tip in the opposite direction. Uh, additional growth within the district is also expected to occur along the new southeast loop, uh, just south of um, Highway 79, and that is connecting Texas 130 and US 79. But we all saw the explosion and growth that uh, State Highway 130 brought in. Uh, that southeast loop will continue to bring additional development uh, to that southern corridor. And once again, I want to reiterate the fact that the Hutto ISD Board of Trustees is committed to maintaining the existing tax rate. And the reason they can do this is because of the growth in the district's tax base and the continued growth and economic development in our immediate attendance zone. You want to do some questions, Dr. Thomas? Let's do it. All right. Dr. Thomas, what course of action will Hutto ISD be required to take if the 2023 bond proposals do not pass? Well, Mr. Gideon, first of all, we're very hopeful that it will pass and that the voters will support the bond referendum. But if it does not, we will be undeterred. We will go right back to our citizens committee, uh, reestablish them and 
uh, early August and get rolling again and get ready for the November election. Go back out to our voters and our parents and try once again because the children, uh, according to the la latest demographic reports, are going to show up at our doorsteps come fall. Absolutely, and, and it goes without saying that even though we have a bond that's coming, we are planning to drop seven portables this year uh, at uh, Cottonwood Creek Elementary School, Huddle Middle School, and uh, other campuses to support the growth. So irregardless of where our stakeholders are with our board as an administrative team, we still have to accommodate the utilization capacity on our campuses, so that does mean portables. Correct. And it's not just the portables, it's the expense that comes with, a, with the portables. We have to purchase them, we have to move them here, we have to put in uh, plumbing and electricity. And now with all of the safety standards Absolutely. and safety requirements uh, for our, our portables, um, we want to ensure that our children are safe, even though they may not be inside the main buildings. Very good. All right, uh, let's shoot one your way. <laughs> How soon will new schools be built following the successful bond passage of bond 2023 proposals and when will the bonds be sold? Well, that largely will rely on the board's final decision making. The administrative team with stakeholder input will of course address where we are on our utilization capacities on our campuses and we'll make priority decisions based on what our capacity is, what the scenarios or the priorities need to be going forward. We've already mentioned that an elementary school uh, for the north is needed because of the portables that we're bringing in. I would anticipate, although it's uh, not set in stone, that elementary eight would be one of the first projects. And I also think a high priority is gonna be Hutto High School renovations to get that flagship completely uh, finished before we entertain any thoughts of the second high school. However, that's a board decision uh, with our stakeholders, and it also depends a little bit on where our bonding capacity is in order for us to sell those bonds. So all we're, all we're asking voters to do is to give the board that authorization, that flexibility to make those decisions. Right. Okay, thank you. So, how does Hutto ISD plan to pay for the bonds with no tax rate increase. I think your presentation laid that out. Would you like to reiterate? Uh, just once again, I don't think um, uh, people can uh, not drive any of the major thoroughfares here in Hutto ISD and not notice the economic development that is taking place in our immediate area. So we are confident that the tax base, uh, which includes all rooftops and all businesses in the Hutto ISD attendance zone, which is very different from the city of Hutto, mm -hmm. uh, will continue to, uh, to grow and that will provide that tax base that the school district needs to generate the funds to meet not only existing bond debt, but to meet new debt. Very good. Hi. So how trustworthy are the Hutto ISD's demographers and are their projections accurate? Who else utilizes demographers for planning for the future? Well, I would say to the latter part of the question, um, most growing communities will rely on demographic science to try to do some kind of projection. Uh, Templeton Demographic, also known as Zonda, is the firm that we use. It's also used by our ESD. Chief Kerwood utilizes for the planning of future fire stations and for staffing and personnel, uh, but also understanding the, the, the challenges of moving heavy firefighting mm -hmm. equipment around our community in our subdivision. Uh, he uses the same firm. Uh, Templeton is a, um, a reliable demographer that is used all across uh, the state of Texas by fast growth districts. Mm -hmm. um, they are conservative unless the board directs them to do different types of scenarios. Basically, they are a demographer that goes beyond the old days of demographic reporting where you have birth rates and you compare that to death, uh, death rates. Nowadays, the science comes down to being able to predict what a developed lot or a developed home or an apartment complex mm -hmm. may produce. We are a middle school class, or I'm sorry, let me say this again, we are a middle to upper middle class community, which is 
an indication of why our growth in the secondary levels are, is where it's at at the middle school. Fifth grade through ninth grade is our fastest growing grades. But more importantly, proofs in the pudding, Mr. Demographics, Mr. Templeton and his team uh, have been our demographic uh, firm for the last five years and they have been just about right on the button. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember, we don't use demographics just to talk about capital improvement, but that also has implications in the regular budget process. How many staff do we need to plan for for growth? Mm -hmm. And so they're very conservative and very reliable. And I might add that you can find demographic reports on our, on our website. We do share that, uh, those studies. We get four of those a year. And then we share them with Commissioner Bowles, of course, at the county, but also with the city of Hutto and the Economic Development Corporation because they use that information as well. And unlike a common misconception out there, we don't build schools so that children can come. We build schools because children have already arrived. That's a good point. You know, cities can be more proactive in marketing uh, communities, whereas we're more reactive in terms of developers. But we have to understand, how, and our board uh, has to be fully informed on how to be proactive in its approach for planning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're not gonna build schools if the kids aren't coming. It's a matter of when subdivisions are approved, what's the impact on our, uh, on our student population, and how do we accommodate the physical spaces that we need so that students can be successful in the classroom. Exactly, and we already know that three of our existing elementary schools have already reached capacity, and by 2026, all elementary schools will have reached capacity. Uh, we know, of course, with Gus Almquist coming online in August of 2024, the middle schools have reached capacity. And uh, we know, of course, Huddle Middle School is getting is receiving three of those seven portables this coming summer. to the district this summer. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So what happens if the projected enrollment does not happen as stated? Does the district sell all of the bonds at once? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, and I think you, you um, touched on this uh, response in an earlier question. We are only going to sell bonds as the need for a project arises, a project being a school or obviously a renovation project like we have going on at, at Hutto High School. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a bond oversight uh, meeting on Tuesday night uh, where we'll review existing projects and where the status uh, is on those projects and how much money has been expended, how much um, and uh, how much additional work is needed on those uh, projects. But no, uh, definitely, we will only sell bonds when we need to fund a project. If something should happen to the economy and all of a sudden students uh, stop coming because families stop moving here, uh, then we'll put a pause on those bonds and only sell them as we need them and only sell them as we are able to repay our debt because we have to be able to meet that debt obligation. And as stated before, the Board of Trustees is committed to not increasing the tax rate. So if we can't afford to do something, very much like a, 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 a you know, just a regular person, if we can't uh, afford to buy that expensive home, uh, if we can't afford to buy that car, we're not going to do that. And if we cannot afford to repay our debt, we're not gonna sell those bonds. And I think it goes without saying, but I think our voters need to also understand that if we need a school in August of 24, there's a timeline to getting a school built, right? Not only is there the analysis by the financial firms, which by the way, statutorily a board is required to use a third party approved financial advisor along with bond uh, uh, audit and bond program managers, et cetera, that are required by the state of Texas. But working hand in hand with our CFO, our board, excuse me, then <coughs> has to make decisions strategically with uh, managing that debt that you talked about so well in the presentation. But then when it's turned over to the ops folks, there's a timeline of design and then there's a timeline of build. And an elementary school can take it up to 28 months now to build. You back that up by six months and that's how long it takes to take a design from drawing and stakeholder input to construction documents. So it's not a, a quick turnaround. So the planning the board and the administration has to have with its stakeholders, with its bond oversight committee, uh, encompasses all of that laddering out of those scenarios. Exactly. Okay, let's look at another question here. Uh, what types of technology does Huddle ISD want to purchase or replace? 
I noticed that there are two ballot propositions outlining technology purposes. Why are those on separate propositions? So the first is, is bundled in with what the community recommended and it's part of the actual physical or infrastructure of the buildings that are going to be built or the existing facilities that we own. So our district, WAN, is privately owned. Uh, we own two legs. That's the wide area network. All of our Wi-Fi, all of our network gear, uh, all the way down to card access readers, to security systems, to cameras, that's all considered infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That is not plug and go. And for the benefit of voters, things like that are, are usually uh, paid for by bonds, but only financed out five mm -hmm. years. The same thing with school buses that we talk about in the presentation. They're not a 30-year payback. They're a five-year payback. In the separate proposition, that is specifically the devices, the one-to-one -one devices. Uh, the goal of the district and its technology plan was to have enough devices so that you have a one-to-one -one platform. That does not mean that children that are in elementary take devices home, although during COVID it came in very handy. Mm -hmm. But secondary and up, we are obviously issuing a device much le like we would have issued textbooks when mm -hmm. I was in school, and it's part of their instructional process. And in the children in the classrooms in the secondary and below, pardon me, the middle school and below, have access to classroom sets. Well, those have a five to seven year life and they need to be refreshed, mm -hmm. but we also have to contemplate growth. And mm -hmm. so as we add students, replace equipment, this is what that's, that separate proposition is all about. Dr. Thomas, on our frequently asked questions, we uh, have gotten this question a few times. I have heard some people say that the Hutto ISD is not transparent, not transparent in its dealings or decision making. In addition to the Board of Trustees, who else has oversight of the bonds and spending and who came up with the list of projects? Okay, so let's, t let's tackle the first part of the question as far as uh, transparency. I invite our community to uh, tune in and now that we're live streaming all of our board meetings, all of our board meetings, all uh, business, all decisions has to be conducted in a public uh, setting. All of those meetings are open to the public. We invite people to come up and ask us questions. Uh, I would like to know why people believe that we're not uh, transparent. Uh, we have um, all of the necessary documents to follow any of the bond projects on our website. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a tab uh, dedicated specifically to bond information and not just for bond uh, 2019, which is the current, the current money that we are working with, but there's also information on bond 2008 and bonds before that. Uh, if anyone wants to review uh, financial records, we invite them to come up and visit with uh, Mr. Graham, our CFO, and any member of the business office. And we will be happy uh, to show records or, or pull up expense reports or pull up invoices or pull up anything that they want to see uh, regarding our management of bond dollars. Because I can assure you that we can account for every single bond dollar uh, that has uh, come to our school district. And I think our audit reports indicate that, a clean audit report. Plus uh, it's an award-winning business office, right? Award-winning uh, business office uh, for the last six years that I've been here. Uh, and even before that, that, uh, uh, that practice of uh, transparency and having uh, clean audits and uh, clean uh, records, uh, the, the business office has never come under any scrutiny or any reason to have a doubt about what's happening uh, within those walls of the business office. But no secret deals, no, no backroom deals with board members? I don't think any of us would be employed <laughs> if there were any of those types of deals taking place. But it would also be safe to say that just about all the decisions made by the board, other than legal decisions uh, that are sometimes tied into statute, are stakeholder driven. Mm -hmm. Our strategic plan, was that not a stakeholder document? Very much so. So the mission and vision of the district was informed by voters, by mm -hmm. our stakeholders, uh, our board adopted those. And from that, we developed board goals, mm -hmm. which make their way into the district improvement plans, mm -hmm. which are required by law, which require attendance or participation by stakeholders, correct? Correct. That includes campus improvement plans that mm -hmm. are very similar to the district improvement plans. Mm -hmm. So really all decisions, while our board <laughs> has 
legal authorities as elected officials to represent our voters as owners on behalf in real property matters, finance, and policy, they rely heavily on their stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And all of our committees that we have, from the celebrated uh, Hippo Nation University mm -hmm. where we're going out and we're recruiting people who want to know how school bis uh, district business works to uh, monthly meetings that we have at a board meeting and all those agendas mm -hmm. are posted and there's stakeholder opportunities mm -hmm. for, for feedback. And I think uh, a group that we should uh, really spotlight and, and highlight in this Q&A session is the Bond Oversight Committee. Yes. Uh, that is comprised of school board members, community members, uh, staff members. We meet quarterly. Uh, like I said earlier, we have a meeting tomorrow night. These meetings are open to the public where we review all current projects, all current expenditures, and we even look at cost savings and what, uh, and what we intend to do with uh, cost saving dollars. Uh, we never uh, hide any of those cost saving dollars or any money that's earned uh, from interest, from bond dollars, all of that go is invested right back into our facilities. And we can't exceed what the voters authorize us to spend, right? Right. And then you've got not only that oversight function, but then there are the procurement functions that are required. Mm -hmm. You know, when the voters do authorize uh, the board for a bond, board has to make decisions mm -hmm. on the sale based on the financial advisors. Mm -hmm. We as an administration will bring recommendations again with stakeholder mm -hmm. input on the projects that we're going to push out. But then we go through the procurement process. There's a selection of architects that mm -hmm. we have to follow state law on how we secure those. There's a selection of contractors. Mm -hmm. There's a selection of engineers. Mm -hmm. Those also are vetted by committees that work uh, through the procurement process to make a selection that the board then approves, right? Then we get into design. The board, once again, after stakeholder mm -hmm. feedback, makes its way into mm -hmm. the design. The board approves schematic designs. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'm reiterating the stakeholder involvement. No secret deals, no back behind the scenes activity that goes on. And then before we turn dirt, the board has to approve the final budget. Mm -hmm. And then during the process, that's where the oversight committee uh, keeps an, a very close watchful eye along with our, our bond accountant mm -hmm. who's assigned mm -hmm. to watch the dollars because what he produces is then put on the internet for folks to see. It's totally in the public. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a couple more questions. Who can vote in the Hutto ISD bond and where will we be able to vote? Well, if you have one, it's easy. If you're a parent, obviously, and you have children in our schools, whether you have a Round Rock address or a Georgetown address, we even have some families that have a Taylor address. If your children or if you attended uh, the Hutto ISD schools, obviously you're eligible to vote. But for people who have recently moved here and may not have children in the, in the school district, um, I think it's a, ma a matter of logging on uh, to the Williamson County uh, voter registration site uh, and you can easily tell uh, what school district you're eligible to vote in. Bar, but our attendance zone goes as far north as the San Gabriel River, mm -hmm. uh, San Gabriel Estates, our, our property boundaries go as far north as that. Uh, they go all the way to Red Bud Trail. Actually the Walmart on Red Bud and 79 belongs to Hutto ISD. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we go down as far south as uh, Row Lane, and then uh, we go uh, all the way to County Road 110 and Farm Road 3349. Last question. What are the implications on our voting public who are 65 and up? Well, if you are 65 and up, you have the ability to apply for a homestead exemption. You do have to file a homestead exemption application with the Williamson County Appraisal Office. But if you have turned 65 and you have not done that, you should and take advantage of that tax break. So their taxes are frozen if they've completed the paperwork. That is correct. Thank you. All right, Hippo Nation, that about wraps it up for this Bond 2023 information session. If you still have questions, we have answers. You can email questions to bond at huddoisd.net. And we look at that email box each and every day. So send those questions on to us and you can be assured that someone will respond to you.
Uh, election day, of course, is Saturday, May 6th, and you can vote. If you're in Williamson County, uh, you can vote uh, on in any voting location on the actual election day. But if you like to get ahead and uh, avoid the long lines, you can take advantage of early voting, which is April 24th through May 2nd.